Hello, everyone. It looks like uh, we have the participants connecting. And uh, I'd like to welcome everyone at today's webinar. Uh, we are going to start in just a few minutes uh, while we're still waiting for all of the participants to join. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to write a short description of who you are, uh, where you're from, and your topic of interest in merchandising. You can also share your expectations, share your questions, um, either at the beginning, during the webinar, or uh, at the end. Uh, we'll try to answer those questions. And uh, in the meantime, we'll uh, still take several minutes to wait for, for the participants to join. Feel free to use the chat in Zoom. Okay, more, more participants are joining. It will be just a few more minutes. Thank you for your patience. Just one more minute and we're ready to start. Okay, good morning everyone. We're ready to start and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, present you the webinar. So the topic is uh, for today's webinar and thank you, thank you for, for your time and the interest in the topic of uh, improving the uh, shell space profitability and improving the shell space perfor performance. Uh, your hosts today are, uh, my apologies, the slides are not, uh, are not yet uh, changing. 
Uh, let me start with the introduction of the host, uh, myself, uh, Vladimir Bezrabri. I'm the head of international growth at Leafio and Anna Yermolaeva, uh, the head of business development at EMEA. Good morning, Anna. Hello, Vladimir. Thank you for the introduction. Great. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, before, uh, before we jump into the topic of planogramming and efficiencies and uh, shell space performance, I'd like to, uh, to uh, introduce Leafio. The webinar is brought to you by Leafio, uh, the business process automation and optimization uh, vendor in retail. Uh, as a company, just a few words on uh, our history, our background, so that way you have the understanding of what we actually do um, for those who are not yet familiar with us. So um, as, as a company, we've been around uh, since 2014 and uh, we're present in the EU. We're servicing our retail companies um, in Europe, in uh, Middle East uh, and North and South America. In various regions, uh, we provide also support uh, through our partnership network. Um, so currently, over 150 companies are using our software on a daily basis to efficiently manage inventories, perform replenishment, orchestrate trade promotions, and optimize merchandising to drive more sales, revenue, to increase customer loyalty, to save time and money. And in particular today, we're going to dedicate our time um, and attention to uh, the merchandising side of processes in, uh, in retail. Um, the, core, the core of our business is within the inventory optimization, promotion management, and planogram optimization. Let me go ahead and uh, continue. Um, as I mentioned, regionally we're present in uh, we're present globally, um, and we're we're working with the majority of retail verticals uh, that include convenience stores, grocery retail, DIY, uh, electronics, supermarkets, and health and beauty. Um, and over the course of today's webinar will present you the real cases of our customers within some of these categories of retail and will give you great examples of how uh, centralization, automation, and st standardization of retail uh, merchandising processes can help increase revenue, can help drive more sales, um, and is overall um, uh, very efficient uh, for improving the processes. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to uh, take a look at, um, at several cases uh, of, um, I, uh, of identifying inefficiencies uh, with help of data visualization. Uh, we'll speak on, on uh, the two cases of uh, Grado's company, um, how it was able to, uh, to improve the layout efficiencies uh, based on the uh, data vis visualization. We're also going to take a look at how merchandising centralization and end-to-end -end process transparency helps increase operational speed and decision-making process uh, based on the two cases of Chudo company and white and dry uh, retail company. Uh, we will also share details of a large merchandising optimization project that was supported by, um, uh, by uh, Leafio uh, Automation Solution during the growing stage of a large gas and oil retailer uh, and a, uh, an alcohol uh, retailer uh, without actually increasing the number of merchandising uh, managers while the company was in there and still is in, in the growing stage. Um, and then afterwards, we will take a um, closer look at how merchandising tools help optimize assortment 
and improve turnover based on the case of a retail complex, uh, of a retail company agri complex. And um, we'll also speak on advantages on, of using uh, merchandising business process um, analytics uh, based on two, two uh, real cases of retail companies, basket and class. Um, and now we'll start, Anna will start with uh, describing the uh, planogram approaches. Uh, Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you, Vladimir. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so I would like to start with that uh, the first area actually where the merchandising solution can help is actually visualizing the problem because retailers that don't have any solution for the merchandising optimization, uh, they usually do planograms intuitively in some Excel spreadsheets or graph editors. So how they usually do, they like take an equipment, they understand, okay, here on this equipment, here will be the milk category, here will be yogurts, here will be some sour cream. So they don't know where exactly each SKU will be placed in what number of facings. And uh, evidently in such case, it's uh, very hard to manage the space and it's almost impossible to understand how each SKU performs. Uh, and is the number of facing correct? Uh, does it occupy the appropriate space? Uh, is the planogram based on the analytics? So uh, all of these questions are remained unanswered. So on the opposite side with having the item-based planogram and having possibility to view the history, it becomes very obvious what are items that need to be optimized. Having a tool that is based, uh, that can uh, help to create the planogram based on the analytics, having the coloring according to ABCD analysis, uh, it gives a clear understanding if the planogram is built correctly. So in other words, it helps to understand. So if uh, the SKU that is placed on the shelf, uh, does it have a good sales? Does it have a good margin? Uh, is it in some priority assortment? So um, it depends actually on the company strategy of doing the merchandising process. Uh, so what are the advantages actually of the item-based planograms? Uh, first of all, it's very clear and easy communication tool with the stores because people who make the actual layout, they clearly know, okay, this SKU should be put in this equipment, in this number of facings, on the second, on the third shelf. So they have a uh, very good visibility on how to uh, make the actual layout. And secondly, they have the uh, they have the photo of the product, so they clearly understand, okay, uh, here this product should be in this shelf. Secondly, it helps in the replenishment process because the system, uh, it uh, calculates the number of facings in width or in depth, and uh, this uh, data can be uploaded to the ERP system, and after that, it can be used for the replenishment process for calculation the buffer, so-called buffer for the merchandising layout. And the last but not the least, it helps to place the goods on the shelf, not intuitively, but based on the data, based on the analytics. And it's very important not to do it uh, just according to some uh, logic of one person, but according to the rules of the company. Uh, let's uh, have a look at some case studies. So the first uh, uh, company we're going to talk about is the company Gradus. Uh, yeah, thank you, Vladimir. So it's a liquor store retail chain uh, with 70 stores, uh, 5,000 SKUs. Uh, they, have, uh, they are actually over the counter retailer and they have just one merchandising management manager who is responsible for the layout. Um, let's have a look what we did with uh, this company. Uh, so the first thing that we uh, did after implementation is we uh, created the uh, digital uh, and item-based planogram. Uh, when we created that, uh, it uh, became very obvious where the problem is. So um, I think that everyone recognized uh, in this slide the, um, the planogram that is uh, colored according to ABCD analysis. So here we can see the uh, green category. So it's the A products, the B category is the yellow products, the C category uh, red products. And D category, it's the worst category and uh, it is colored with black color. So we 
uh, evidently see that uh, here is a lot of products uh, uh, with the uh, highlighted with black, so a lot of D category um, that should actually occupy very little, uh, very little space uh, on the shelf. Uh, so the first thing that uh, comes into mind is uh, that uh, we should remove the D products from the shelf, at least from the second and third shelves, so the most popular shelves, and replace them with A products and B products. But it's not that simple because uh, here are a lot of factors that influence the planogram and the layout. First of all, it's, uh, it can be some conditions with the suppliers. Secondly, it can be some uh, layout rules. Uh, it can, uh, this uh, black SKUs can play some role in this assortment. So we cannot just move D category from the shelf. But at least we need to understand and uh, we have the base for analysis and we have the base for negotiations with the suppliers. So uh, uh, the category management work on this, uh, worked on this planogram. And uh, in a week, we got a little bit different result. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, what we can see here, so he slightly managed uh, the uh, planogram, uh, but following the restrictions. And uh, we already see that uh, the result changed. So we are evaluating the results according to the following KPI. So it's uh, sales from meters, sales from facing, uh, profit from meter and profit from facing. So just with uh, uh, slight changes in the planogram, we already uh, got increase in these KPIs. Uh, what the category manager did, he uh, slightly removed, uh, it, sorry, decreased the uh, black category. Uh, he rearranged the layout and uh, he uh, in a little bit increased the A and B category. And uh, we measured one more uh, time those KPIs in three weeks, and we got very, uh, very good results uh, on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the KPIs were as follows. So the sales from one meter, they increased, uh, it increased on 44%. The sales from one facing increased on 45%. And the profit from one meter increased on uh, 52%. And the profit from one face on 53%. So there is a very huge result on, uh, on changing the layout. And I will emphasize here that uh, uh, these results are with just slight change in the assortment. So what the company did after that, they uh, analyzed additional stores uh, with uh, those planograms and uh, they uh, made some corrections there as well. And uh, of course we measured the result and the effect resulted in 5% increase in sales and in 6% increase in profitability. So thus we can see how the work of the category manager can in and his control of the planogram execution uh, can uh, bring very good results. And what we have for today is that company uh, uh, decreased the space for this product category and they put another goods on the shelf that uh, performs better. Uh, so let's have a case, uh, let's have a look at uh, the uh, case of our other company. Uh, that is uh, Chuda company, that's uh, our, one of our oldest clients. Uh, so they actually saw the development of the products and they uh, highly participated in that. Uh, so what they had is, uh, what, the, uh, what are the criteria for this uh, retail chain? They have uh, 38 stores, they have uh, 50,000 SKUs, and they have uh, for 38 stores just three merchandising managers who are responsible for creating the planograms. And uh, the following, uh, so what uh, the main driver for this retailer uh, when they were looking for the merchandising solution was that uh, they wanted to scale. And actually it's one of the main drivers for, uh, for like 90 or 80% of our customers. Before they uh, want to scale, they are looking for some solution to optimize and automate their processes. Uh, so regarding this customer, what they had uh, initially, uh, they had a um, situation when uh, there were no standards for the whole retail chain. So one store was very different from another store. The equipment was different, uh, the uh, store layout was different, and of course the planograms was different. So people at stores 
were responsible for uh, making the layout and one store was uh, one store looked differently than another one so they wanted to unify this process they wanted to uh, standardize um, the cost for purchasing the equipment they want to uh, wanted to correct the assortment and make the layout according to the demand so they need to see the data and based on this data to build the planogram and uh, so uh, this company, they actually implemented uh, their end-to-end -end business process. Uh, and uh, that included, uh, Vladimir, can you please switch uh, to the next slide? Mm -hmm, thank you. Uh, so uh, they made uh, unification, as I've already mentioned, and uh, uh, they unified and uh, centralized the merchandising process and it became very clear, very transparent, and it was managed from the central office. So uh, uh, let's go further. Uh, what they made is they uh, uh, implemented end-to-end -end merchandising process. Uh, what it insists of? Uh, first of all, it was creation of planograms. So people in the central office, they created the planograms uh, based on some mutual logic for the whole company. After that, uh, they uh, published these planograms and people at stores, uh, they made the actual layout according to the planogram. After that, they made their photo of the layout. We call it realogram. Uh, and after that, they returned the photo back to the central office, so they reported that the task is completed. And after that, the central office, after some time, they made an analysis how efficient the planogram is. And in case of this customer, uh, uh, I would say that uh, mobile app played a very good role here. And uh, the customer, so how it, uh, how it was made, the customer at central office, they made the new planograms or create, uh, created the new planograms or renewed the old planograms. After they published the new planogram, it was uh, uh, automatically the task went to the uh, merchandising manager who made the actual layout. Uh, with the help of the mobile application. So in the mobile application, he saw the uh, planogram and he went to the store and made the actual layout according to the planogram. In the mobile app, he is able to see how the planogram look, uh, should look like with the photos of the products, uh, how, the, uh, how many facings there should be in width and in depth, uh, how uh, on, which, uh, uh, on which shelf the SKU should be placed, and uh, uh, additionally, he could just scan the SKU with the help of the mobile app because we have a barcode scanner in the mobile application and he clearly understands on what to shelf to put this SKU. So this, this process became really handy for the uh, merchandising manager in making the layout and it uh, highly increased the productivity. Uh, one more interesting thing regarding this customer is that uh, they initiated the creation of uh, direct communication between the uh, merchandise and the central office. And it turned out that such an obvious and easy scene, uh, uh, it uh, uh, simplified the process and it helped uh, to increase its efficiency. So here you can see the uh, screen of the mobile application. Uh, by the way, it is available both for the Android and iOS. Uh, and on the mobile application, uh, you can see here the red envelope. And uh, this small button is actually a very powerful direct communication tool. Uh, many unnecessary things and people are actually uh, removed from this process and it's very easy to communicate between the author, so the person who created the planogram, and between the planogram execu executor. So, uh, for example, let's imagine the situation when uh, the merchandising manager, he goes to the store to make the actual layout and uh, he, uh, he sees that, okay, this SKU should be here uh, on this shelf, but he cannot find this SKU on the warehouse. So he says, okay, this SKU is out of stock. So with having this direct communication, he can just message to the central office that, okay, this product is out of stock. 
and the central office has the possibility to react very quickly on that. So either they can say, okay, you can replace this SKU with another one, or uh, they should additionally make the order, for example, for this SKU if it's out of stock, or he can say, okay, you can increase the facing for the other SKU. So uh, this is a decision should be made centralized by the headquarters. Uh, what would happen if uh, there is no communication, a direct communication tool? Merchandising manager, um, uh, in most cases, he won't go to or call to the headquarters to ask what he should do with this item, and um, he will make a decision on his own. So, for example, he will replace this SKU with something, or in the worst case, he will leave this space empty. Uh, so uh, this tool became very handy, this simple tool became very handy and efficient for this customer. So we are really glad that they initiated that and now we have that in our mobile application. Let's move on to the second, uh, to the to our next customer. Uh, this is also a liquor store tail chain, uh, wide and dry, and uh, this is one, uh, this is a very interesting customer because they uh, initially uh, like they implemented two hour solutions, the replenishment solution and uh, inventory optimization and merchandising optimization. And when they uh, start implementation, they were just 15 stores and uh, they made a very clever decision before scaling to reorganize their business processes for the replenishment and for the merchandising. And now you can see that they have 150 stores and they continue to scale. Uh, they have uh, 1,200 SKU and they have just one merchandising manager who works in the system, who is responsible for the planogram creation, for the store layout creation. And uh, regarding this uh, case, I would say that um, here a big role played the team proactiveness and it became a key factor in the success of the implementation. When we started uh, the implementation, we understood that there is uh, one risk uh, for the implementation because the customer didn't, had, uh, didn't have the uh, data about the product dimensions and product photos. But uh, the team was very active and was uh, very quick. So uh, during the first stage of implementation, they already had 30% uh, of the data available in the system. And uh, the rest of the 70% the uh, of the data, uh, the rest of 70% of the data were uploaded to the system till the end of the implementation. And all uh, store plans, all planograms uh, were created according to the schedule. So uh, I would emphasize here that the team proactiveness in every project is very important. And team proactiveness and involvement is very important in every project. Uh, so, and uh, this company was one of the first one to implement their mobile application and uh, to be used this mobile application by the merchandiser. Uh, so let's have a look how it is done. Uh, so they are using mobile application for the task management. Uh, so when uh, it, con it consists of three stages. The first stage is when uh, the person of the merchandiser, he receives the tasks. Uh, so first of all, when the planogram is created, the new planogram, for example, is created or the planogram is renewed uh, and it is, be it is published, the task goes automatically uh, for the store to the merchandiser to make the actual layout. So it can be done either through the mobile app or through the web. And uh, sometimes it's done through the web in uh, the case of this customer because uh, like in some rare cases because the uh, mobile app cannot be used for some stores. Uh, but uh, for the most of the stores it's done through the mobile app and it's very convenient and very handy for the customer. Uh, when the merchandiser received the planogram, uh, he goes to, uh, to the store to make their actual layout. Uh, so if it's a new planogram, he creates the, the layout from scratch. So he understands what is the number of facing, where should the product should be placed and so on. 
If the planogram uh, was changed from the previous one, he will see the table of changes, which is very convenient. So he will clearly see what is needed to add, to be add there, what is needed to be deleted there. Uh, and uh, he can make this really quickly. And uh, the third step here is that he makes the actual photo of the planogram of the layout and it, uh, it is uploaded and assigned automatically to the planogram. Uh, so uh, in some cases, in cases of our customer, we even re uh, we um, don't allow uh, merchandisers uh, to upload the photos from the library. Uh, we make it just uh, just live photo, so he can just uh, make the photo live photo with the help of the mobile application. Um, and uh, I would like to add here that uh, here the psychological factor also influences the work of the merchandise because he understands that uh, he should make the photo of the layout. Uh, in either way, he may have some fees or sanctions and uh, uh, he will make and it motivates him to make the layout more, um, more efficiently and with higher quality. Uh, but a uh, very important uh, thing here, uh, it's uh, to make the control. Uh, can you we please move to the another slide? Uh, thank you. Uh, so, and it should be one of the steps in the merchandising management. Uh, how the customer uh, does it? Uh, so they have the operations department and uh, this department uh, do some random control uh, of the actual layout uh, from time to time. So they have a look at, uh, they take a look at the store plan, they understand which equipment uh, doesn't perform very well, and they make their comparison of the planogram and realogram. So they uh, understand, okay, that uh, might be, uh, might, there might be something wrong with the layout if uh, this equipment performs not very well. And they, they make this comparison and they can understand and uh, give some feedback probably to the merchandiser. Uh, there's very frequent question regarding uh, from our customers uh, regarding if this uh, comparison can be made uh, can be made automatically and uh, if this recognition of the planogram can be of the realogram can be made automatically and compared with the planogram uh, we have uh, a partner for that who can do such uh, uh, recognition but at the moment this technology is quite raw uh, the system needs some time to be educated on that and uh, it's very expensive. So we hope that and actually we are pretty sure that in future this technology will take place and will be well, very popular, but at uh, this stage it's, um, it's not uh, very reasonable to implement that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so, um, uh, and uh, the process uh, of uh, uh, the process of merchandise and control uh, ends with uh, the continuous check of completed uh, completed tasks in the retail chain. Uh, these customers are white and dry. They do it with the help of the dashboard. So on the dashboard, they can clearly see uh, the stores. They can clearly see uh, the uh, tasks in this store. So we can see the columns, the diagram in the columns. And if we click on one store, we will be able to see uh, the round diagram colored with different, uh, different colors. That means the task statuses. So uh, just with one, uh, having one look at uh, this uh, dashboard, it, makes, it becomes clear uh, how the retail chain is performing in terms of the task completion. And uh, uh, the last thing that uh, I would like to say about, uh, this, uh, about this case is that uh, in our projects always we like to make, uh, uh, we are very, very focused on the effects. And uh, we try to measure the initial situation before we go to the project and what, uh, uh, what is the effect after a couple of months after implementation. So in case of this customers, uh, customer, we made such comparison and we compared their data before implementation and a couple of months after implementation. And we, uh, we can see very good results here. So we can see that uh, almost all product category, they have a very big rise in terms of uh, sales, in terms of margin, profitability, and so on. So uh, that's how the uh, implementation and automation of the business processes can influence 
the, uh, the efficiency of the retail chain. Uh, now I'm, I will give the word to Vladimir. He will continue with the other cases. Vladimir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, and so thank you. Thank you for the great overview of uh, the uh, uh, merchandising processes and how they're affecting the actual uh, financial performance. Uh, what type of approaches uh, are have helpful, such as uh, full process transparency, full process control, um, uh, and so on. There is there there are additional uh, uh, additional methods to. Uh, further improve the uh, efficiency of the layout and of the merchandising process overall. One of such uh, uh, practices is the format equipment. And I'm going to touch on that point just to describe, just to, 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 to showcase the importance of that approach and how companies that are scaling are able to handle the growth and handle it in an extremely efficient way. So one of our customers, uh, a, 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 a liquor, a liquor uh, store retail chain, uh, WinLab, that is a part of very large uh, alcohol producer group um, and has been present in the market for 20 years, well-established company with over 600 locations, uh, 2,000 of active, excuse me, assortment, uh, was able to um, efficiently manage the growth with only two merchandising managers. And this is truly an impressive case. Um, well, right now there are two merchandising managers, but actually when we were starting the project, there was only one. And that's why that's what, what makes this case particularly impressive. So um, one of the common things between this company and, and the next company that I'm going to speak about, the uh, uh, Western Oil Group, uh, which is a company with over 500 retail locations, uh, which is oil and, gas, uh, uh, oil and gas retail with mini supermarkets uh, with up to 2000 SKUs uh, in, in the assortment and four merchandising managers. So something that unites this, this uh, gas and, uh, oil and gas retailer with, and by the way, the oil and gas retail has been rapidly involved, evolving over the, the, the past years. Uh, and they're introducing right now uh, and, and, and are, um, uh, and they have available fresh category, yogurts, food and non-food items. Uh, so they're, they're truly, supermarkets that you could shop at um, and they're, they're, they're highly developed. And if you take a look at these, uh, at these their stores, you'll see that they're really, really modern. So what's uniting the, the, the wind lab and the Western oil group retail is the approach to efficiency. So uh, the, the secret behind, um, behind managing uh, such a large number of locations is the format planogram management. So the format planogram and format equipment is the, uh, is the equipment that has simi similarities in how it's constructed. And they, they, have, um, they have common grouping for certain locations. So just an example, uh, such grouping can be based on size of the retail location, on type, etc. Which means that for a certain group, for example, a small or a convenience store group, uh, there is a common standardized equipment uh, that that can be uh, changed in a central office once, and it's being communicated to all of the locations automatically without extra effort. So uh, in, this, uh, in this case, we're, uh, uh, we're going to take a, a, a more detailed look at the format equipment. 
So the unification is the secret behind efficient formatic, uh, format management. Um, it requires prior standardization. And in case with WinLab company, we've uh, we started gradually uh, with the pilot project, which required the company to actually standardize all of the equipment um, and then introduce the format management. Um, uh, the, the change that is made, once again, is automatically communicated and it's done in seconds. So it can, can be communicated to 500 locations at no time, which means that the company gets evident advantage of saving time and effort on planogram management. And the uh, locations are receiving these not notifications sim simultaneously, which means high speed of change uh, in a fast paced environment. Um, the great thing is that the format management that is present in the Leafio, Leafio merchandising management system allows to track the changes at various levels. So, you, so uh, if you're using the format management, you can see the change directly for each and every individual equipment. You can see the change for uh, the change and the analytics for the, uh, for the entire company at the corporate level. Um, so the, just a few more details on the project. The WinLab project has started in August 2020, and with gradual ro uh, rollout of this solution, we have now onboarded 50% of the uh, locations. Um, and the impressive thing, there, there was only one manager working, right now there are two. And uh, the, the team, the, the, the merchandising team is working uh, on five, launching five new locations at the time, um, which means that they take the five locations, they standardize all of the equipment inside, they standardize the planograms and then onboard those locations. With such approach, the centralization and optimization results are now becoming evident. So for these 300 locations, um, two managers are managing it and they're managing the entire business process from making the changes to adding or excluding items to rotating the assortment and to sending the planograms to the locations and the control that, uh, of the execution that Anna was talking about earlier. Western Oil Group project has started in 2019. And um, at that time, the company was at very active growth stage, which puts additional pressure on the resources that are already managing the uh, planograms at the locations. The impressive thing is that we were able to launch the project, handle the growth, the rapid growth of the company and enable ultra productivity of the resources without hiring additional merchandising managers. So as a result, the manual process have, uh, have uh, decreased by 75%. The planogram creation on average takes three to 15 minutes and 100% of all of the tasks are under control for each and every location. Um, that was, particularly for me, the most important and uh, the most impressive thing. Now we are going to take a look at um, our next customer. Um, the next company is um, more experienced than other customers that we have worked with in a way that they have already been trying to implement the item-based planogram uh, for the past two years before we started the project. And this company was very cautious about working with, the, with a vendor and uh, the project in general. And uh, um, the company has made a conscious decision to start working with our merchandising experts and the, the, the format management has been at the core of their focus. 
few, few details on the company. It's a, a grocery retailer. Uh, they're producing uh, the, uh, the, the, the food producer uh, and the retailer. So they're focused on selling healthy groceries uh, at their 650 locations uh, that vary between one and a half to 5,000 SKUs per location. At the moment, they have two planogram management, managers and one project designer uh, with uh, a large number of system users. They have truly, truly implemented and taken on the power of the solution. With 10 regional directors overseeing the uh, merchandising operations, two category managers uh, working in the solution, 60 supervisors and 650 merchandisers at the locations using the system on a daily basis. And for all of this, uh, for all of this large group of, um, uh, of system users, there is a single source of data that is available between the mobile app and the web application. Single, single source that is, uh, uh, th that is truly fast and available in cloud. This is one of the biggest advantages that the, all of the changes are communicated rapidly for both the changes in the planogram and for the internal communication, as Anna has mentioned. So the uh, project has started with the goals of um, testing demand elasticity on layouts and test a theoretical merchandising approach that was already present in the company. The shelf space optimization and stock levels optimization uh, was a key area uh, of focus. An increasing trade equipment efficiency was also put at the, uh, at the top priorities, as well as developing reliable data sources to support the business decisions in merchandising and shelf space distribution, as well as assortment management. So the project tasks were identifying the effect, uh, efficient number of SKUs per square meter, redistributing, <coughs> my apologies, redistributing the shelf space according to the demand elasticity, configuring the merchandising um, uh, and identification of uh, slow movers in the stock and, uh, um, uh, and in the SKU groups, as well as shelf, uh, having the shelf performance data. Uh, so <coughs> exhibit demo um, uh, for all SKUs, um, uh, being able to actually work with this exhibit demo, understand how much is in stock, how much is uh, how much of, of various types um, uh, of the stock is available, how much is of the stock is represented in cost, in pieces, uh, etc. Uh, and also correcting the layout rules and zone allocations in order to improve financial performance for each store. So. As a result, um, um, as a result, the project has started with uh, launching the uh, business process uh, for this uh, for this company, and the business process uh, looks as follows: uh, the planogram cre creation is in the uh, back office, the central office. Then it it's communicated to the locations through planogram distribution. Uh, it's been distributed via mobile app, email, and, and web application. Then, as Anna has explained, the execution takes place and the task control and reporting. So this was supported with implementing strict rules, strict guides, uh, guides and uh, strict personal reliabilities, as well as performance management at every stage of the process. Um, we then continued with uh, with decrease of resources that were required for planogram management. And um, we've, we've uh, decreased the planogram cycle. Um, uh, additionally, the auto product placement and auto facing were introduced. So auto facing is, uh, which means the number of, of facings for each and every product it was now based on analytics and the uh, financial performance and turnover, etc. 
So it depends on, on how the priorities should be set for auto facing, as well as um, stock levels decrease. That's something that we started monitoring from, from the very beginning and they comprise 23% uh, without actually, um, uh, with, um, with the sales increase. So, which, which translates into tremendous, tremendous efficiency increase. Now we're going to, going to take a look at the, at the uh, transformation that the company uh, saw. So um, as, as many companies now don't have access to the efficient tools uh, to, help them, um, to help them manage the planograms at item level, the AgriComplex has used the traditional approach of, uh, of, of block or category planogramming. So this, uh, this actually translated into uh, the possibility to, to have a very, very granular look at each and every item, at each and every shelf. Uh, and uh, further are the things that we have uh, discovered. So category return. Um, we started with, with the um, planogram modification and improvement. Um, and the, uh, this, was, this was made uh, in two main categories for canned meat and canned vegetables. Uh, so we were able to monitor and, and see the improvement in remainder in days, uh, in the planogram correctness, and category returns. So the layout was changed from horizontal to vertical. The number of, of facings has been optimized according to sales indicators. Assortment inconsistencies have been eliminated. Uh, products that were in assortment and were not displayed in a store, uh, as well as goods that were on the display, but were not in the assortment. So we've seen a significant improvement in uh, all of these categories. Um, to further, uh, to further uh, highlight the uh, results, the residuals uh, in days were significantly uh, uh, shortened uh, for canned meat uh, by 6.2 uh, days, veggies by 19 days, um, and uh, further, we have um, uh, tracked the uh, correctness. We were able to see that the correctness for A category and the correctness for a B and C category at these two locations, M105 and MS1000, has uh, also improved significantly. Um, and the um, the um, further improvements that we've seen are the uh, sales returns. The layout um, area for each SKU on the shelf um, is now corresponding to the sales levels, which means there is, there is direct connection and it's dynamically recalculated. A return indicators allows to solve also the zone allocation problem with the goal of improving financial performance uh, of the retail location. The, these indicators reflect the efficiency of category allocation in, in uh, uh, comparison to other categories and help uh, calculate the excessive or deficient shelf space and redistribute it among other categories. Um, so we've seen improvements both in canned and in, in canned meat and canned veggies at both locations. Um, so these are, these are good indicators and the company was very happy with the result. Now I'm uh, getting back to uh, Anna. Yeah, thank you, Vladimir, for such a brilliant overview. Uh, even, though, even though I know all these cases uh, in details, it's uh, always interesting to, to um, listen about them. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the next two cases we are going to talk about uh, were the retail companies that with the help of the analytics, they improved their performance and efficiency. 
So the first company is, uh, the first company is a grocery retail chain Basket. Uh, they are very, they are rather small, but they are very modern and progressive. They have 11 stores and they have uh, 5,000 SKUs of active assortment. And uh, in the case of this retailer, they used item interactive item-based planogram uh, that allowed them to control, first of all, the rotation of the assortment with the help of the analytics. So they clearly saw uh, and actually they clearly see uh, what new items were introduced to the assortment and uh, what items were deleted from the assortment and they can quickly react on the assortment change. So uh, starting from the uh, creation, the updating the planogram and making the actual layout. Secondly, it was uh, they measured and control of which part of the shelf was occupied or wasn't occupied and to measure the percentage. Uh, on the third, uh, they uh, uh, measure and they manage the percentage of the shelf uh, that should belong to some, uh, some certain brand, I will explain here. So for example, if uh, Coca-Cola, they ask, okay, our products, they should occupy 55% of the shelf. Uh, of the equipment or of the shelf. Uh, uh, it's very easy to do that with the help of the tool, but with the help of like Excel or some other tools, uh, it's, it's rather, uh, rather not, very, not very convenient. And uh, the last but not the least today, with the help of the merchandise and optimization tool, they have the data for replenishment. So as I mentioned, they are creating their uh, they are calculating the number of facings and they upload this information and use it for replenishment process. Uh, so actually the majority of these uh, KPIs, they became the KPIs for the merchandisers. And later on, we are going to uh, look uh, a couple of uh, reports that are used by this company. And now we will have a look at the other uh, client that use uh, our analytics a lot. Um, it's a company uh, class and they are supermarket retail chain and uh, they have uh, certain supermarkets, a uh, fix of which are uh, supermarkets with very large, like they are, uh, they are in fact like entertainment spaces. Uh, on the daily basis, they have around 100,000 families uh, that are, show, that are uh, served uh, in uh, their retail chain. And they have the assortment of 90,000 SKUs, so they are very, very big supermarkets. Uh, so in case of uh, this company, uh, they uh, not just implemented the software, but they reorganized the whole business process. And in their case, they did a very interesting thing. They um, didn't go to the pilot when they uh, made it for some, for example, limited number of SKUs and limited number of stores, but they decided to reorganize the uh, whole business process in first five stores and after that to go to the next stage. So what they did, they reorganized the whole merchandising process. They uh, set up a new end-to-end uh, -end merchandising process in five stores. And after that, they moved to the second step. And uh, so regarding the analytics, uh, let's move on. Um, usually in our system, it, uh, it is divided into like uh, two main, like I would say blocks uh, or directions. The first one is analytics, uh, some visual analytics. Uh, it, uh, it's about some diagrams, uh, coloring, highlights and so on. And the second part is table analytics. And uh, this is uh, analytics in the form of different Excel uh, reports that can be downloaded and can be analyzed uh, by the company. So these two companies, they actually used uh, both blocks uh, of analytics and uh, we will have a look at uh, in more details how they did it and what kind of reports they used. Uh, so uh, the first... Uh, Mm -hmm. The first one uh, is uh, analytics about the store plan. Uh, in the slide, you can see the screenshot of our tool and you can see the admin panel, you can see the table report and you can see the store plan. So in uh, case of uh, the customer basket, so this uh, store plan uh, was uploaded and the equipment uh, in on this store plan, it is colored by different colors, as you can see here. I think that everyone recognized here the ABCD analysis 
And uh, it's very important uh, while creating the stop plan and while working on the stop plan to uh, base uh, to make decisions based on the analytics. So uh, with such coloring according to ABCD, it becomes very clear which equipment need to be improved, uh, where it should be shifted, uh, where the advertising area should be put. And uh, so a lot of decisions, uh, both strategic decision and some tactic decisions, they can be made based on this analytics for the stop plan. Uh, for example, uh, decisions such as opening the new store, making some renovation, making some equipment shift, uh, make an introduction of the new assortment and so on. Uh, with uh, making this uh, uh, stop plan, visual stop plan, uh, it's very uh, where interactive stop plan. It's uh, very important to make decisions about equipment, uh, not only like trading equipment uh, where, where the goods are situated, but also some different equipment like share desks, like some uh, uh, stands, and so on. And this, all of this. Uh, uh, decisions they should be made according to some logic and to uh, to manage this logic it's need we need to have a look at the numbers okay let's uh, go further uh, this is one more um, uh, this is one more example how the ABCD uh, analysis on the equipment on the, on the stop plan can look like and uh, the next one I will uh, tell about uh, the uh, bubble plan. So it's uh, there. Uh, it was actually invented uh, and used by our customer class. Um, yeah, let's. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, in case of this customer uh, class or supermarkets, uh, uh, they have very interesting uh, process of uh, uh, creating and approving the bubble plan. So, what they did, they have uh, like uh, two uh, two directions. So, they have their uh, they have people who are responsible for approving their uh, equipment and uh, the equipment placement on the store plan. And the second uh, uh, department, they are responsible actually for planograms creation. What they do, they create two versions of the uh, bubble plan. So the first department, they make their uh, placement of the equipment on the store. After that, they create the zone. For example, they placed equipment uh, for the milk products and they highlight that, okay, this equipment belongs to the milk product. After that, okay, here should be the racks for the coffee, coffee and tea, and they created the zone there and highlighted it, and they say, okay, here should be coffee and tea. And that's the one part of the process. The other part, when the equipment was created and placed on the store plan together with the zones, uh, the uh, department responsible for planograms, they drill down to the planogram and they create planogram for each, uh, uh, for each equipment. And... Um, uh, okay, so uh, let's go, let's move on. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next uh, part of the visual reporting that is used by the customer is uh, uh, the visual analytics for the assortment management. Uh, so what the customer does, he... Um, uh, the data exchange is actually made automatically with the ERP system of the customer and they got information about the new items that were introduced to, to the assortment. So you can see here, the, you can see them here, they're highlighted by the uh, red buttons, um, red dots actually. Uh, so this is the new SKUs that were introduced to the assortment. Uh, the merchandiser or the people in headquarters can clearly see, okay, this new SKU should be present in uh, this number of stores. He can see the stores where, where this SKU should be present, and he can drill down to the store and add this SKU to the planogram. Vice versa, uh, he works with the uh, SKUs that, are, that were deleted from the assortment, so you can see them highlighted with the black dots. Uh, and he can drill down to the store plan, drill down to the planogram and delete these uh, uh, SKUs from the planogram just by one button. 
Uh, okay, let's uh, go further. Um, and uh, additionally to the visual reports, uh, these uh, two customers, they use the table reports in the Excel spreadsheets that can be uploaded from the system. So those are the reports on the ex execution, uh, on the sales from meter, uh, or the reports about the return, uh, both uh, sales, uh, sales return rate and profit return rate. Uh, the reports about stock balance uh, in money and in days. Um, the reports about the product share in uh, width, in sales and in profit. And the reports about the assortment, about in and out assortment, uh, in and out goods, and about the stock balance, for example, for the products that are not in the assortment anymore, but they still, they still have balance. Uh, we will not cover, of course, all of these reports that are used by the customers. We will just have a look at a couple of them. Uh, so first, uh, first one is the report on the return. So this is a, a report that allows to see uh, what part uh, in the uh, sales occupies uh, in the sales of this equipment occupies one certain product or one category, according to uh, what part it occupies on the shelf. And uh, we actually expanded this report and uh, we made it possible uh, to compare not only the categories, but uh, two products inside one, cat uh, one category as well. And the next report, uh, it's rather clear, it's but uh, very important because <laughs> I think that every retail chain, it analyzes the sales for sure. And uh, for in uh, the merchandising direction, uh, it, it's important to uh, uh, analyze the sales. Um, it's the sales per meter. So this report shows how each meter of the shelf performs. Uh, thank you, Vladimir, the floor is yours. I think that you, uh, you will do some summary of, of the webinar of what was discussed today. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, well, we tried our best to uh, demonstrate how there are many different ways to achieve impressive results in, uh, in merchandising management improvement, in increasing the profitability and efficiency of the space that is available at the retail location. And there are really fairly few simple steps that you can take to uh, actually start the improvements. Uh, first and foremost is introducing the uh, item-based um, uh, item based planogram. Secondly, you can uh, have a, 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 an end-to-end -end business process where you, where you can uh, um, notify the locations about the changes, uh, et cetera, and uh, improve the control uh, of what is being uh, done at the location. Um, uh, improve the communication back and forth from the locations um, and, and the feedback, uh, shorten the feedback loop um, uh, from, from the locations. Um, more, uh, leveraging the uh, format of uh, planograms and equipment to um, handle the scale and the growth of the company. Um, optimize the uh, facing and assortment uh, that uh, by leveraging the power of analytics uh, and actually leveraging the analytics uh, at every stage of the merchandising process uh, optimization um, and uh, use the, um, the uh, available reports uh, to uh, fuel the uh, proper decision-making uh, in the company and to have the transparency for everyone to uh, to communicate properly and see the actual performance. So these are just few of the steps that you can take. If you have any questions, our team is open to uh, communicating, open to helping uh, you uh, improve uh, and identify the points for growth. Um, feel free to contact us if any questions came up. Uh, if you have anything you would like to ask right now, Feel free to uh, write your questions to, to the chat. Um, other than this, I think we are all done. And uh, we'd like to thank you for the attention. We'd like to thank you for the involvement. 
and uh, stay uh, alert for our next upcoming events, uh, webinars on uh, replenishment automation, on inventory optimization, and merchandising as well. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar. Yes. Thank you, Anna.